All right, good afternoon here. I'm a little bit late in my video here, so I apologize, usually I do it in the morning. But I do have like top 10, probably top 15 things of not to do when you're under contract, if you're gonna be buying a house, if you're about to close. This is the do's and don'ts list that we put out with our pre-approval. Uh, every time we send out a pre-approval, we send this attachment with it to make sure people don't make a big mistake, okay? Because it, it happens, it happens all the time. Even when we tell them, even when we speak to them, even when we uh, send our updates out there, even when we send this with our pre-approval letter, I mean, we, we hit it three or four or five times. It's like a wave of, don't do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this. So I got the list here. So I'm gonna read it off a little bit. I might complete the whole list, I might not. So uh, just a couple of things here, okay? Things that have come up. Every time something comes up, we add it to the list because wow, that, you know, that kind of blew me away. I wasn't even thinking about that, okay? So uh, let's start with the do's, okay? Uh, do call us if you have any questions. I'll start with the simple ones, okay? Do continue living at your current address. Do continue making your mortgage and rent payments. Do continue using the credit as normal. Don't open up new credit. Don't inquire or anything else about that. It's just going to open up some more questions. You're going to get annoyed. Just trying to avoid the annoyance, okay? Keep working at your current employer. Don't quit. Now, if you get laid off, different ballgame. Sorry. But don't just quit because Sally down the hallway is a real you-know-what, okay? Uh, keep the same insurance company, Okay. Uh, don't change it at the last minute and all of a sudden all the numbers change and the debt to income ratio changes and everything else. Do stay current on all existing accounts. Make your payments, okay, consistently, all right? Something else here too. Don't also, don't uh, show negative in your bank accounts, okay, because that throws up red flags left and right too. So the don'ts, okay, this is from history and I could add a lot more to this, but so don't have family members write the earnest money deposit check. It's got to come from your account or we have to do it as a gift, okay? Which is not a problem, but just extra paperwork. We need to have a gift letter. We need to show where the money's coming from. If it's an FHA loan, conventional, you don't have to do that. Uh, so there's just some extra hurdles, but make sure it comes out of your own account, okay? Uh, don't apply for new credit, okay? If you do that, even if you just inquire, like I said earlier, that will pop up, okay? And what they do, what, what we do, what most lenders do is right before closing, they do an inquiry check. They don't do another credit check, they do a credit inquiry check. If there's any inquiries out there, they're gonna ask about it. Did you open up this? Did you open up that? No, I didn't, or yes, I did. Okay, now you did. What's the payment? What's the balance? This is gonna affect the debt to income ratio, okay? And yes, you're getting a mortgage, okay? You're getting the biggest investment out there that you're probably gonna ever purchase, okay? So when people say, well, it's none of your business, it is our business because we're handing over money to you so we can, so you could pay it back to us. Big deal. If you had a stranger come down the street and say, you know what, uh, I don't know you, but can you lend me $100,000? And by the way, it's, it's none of your business what I do on the side. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, don't buy any furniture. Um, don't change any bank accounts. Uh, don't close any credit card accounts. Don't consolidate your debt in, you know, onto one or more credit cards. Just keep everything status quo, okay? Just get to closing. After that, you do whatever you want, okay? Just make your mortgage payment. Um, don't finance any elective medical procedures. Yes, this can come back to bite you sometimes. Don't, all right, this one, this next one, we almost lost it. We almost lost a deal because of this, okay? It came that close. Debt to income ratio was literally 55 point something percent and we still got it done. But what put us over that is that the person financed a pet, Fido. They financed Fido, okay? So basically they couldn't afford the pet. They couldn't pay for the pet. So they, they took out, they, they financed to pay for the pet, okay? Yeah, so don't do that, okay? Uh, don't join a new fitness club, <laughs> believe it or not. It, it could show up as an inquiry, it could show up as a debt, everything, you know, this goes back to credit card stuff. Um, don't make a major purchase, car, boat, I mean, <laughs> don't buy a car, don't even look at a car, don't even smell a car until after you close. We had clients, I'm not gonna name any names for privacy reasons, but they didn't buy one, they didn't buy two, they bought three, three cars. Okay, 
their debt to income ratio is blown out of the water. We actually had to lower their pre-approval letter by a hundred and something thousand dollars. So don't do that. Uh, let me see. Don't max out a charge over your credit cards. Once again, stay status quo. Don't pay off any loans, credit card without discussing with us first. Just give us a call. I mean, we can tell you, hey, don't do anything. Keep everything status quo. When you're done, then maybe do this, this, and this. Okay? Um, don't pay off charge-offs. Sometimes they could drop your credit score. Just keep it status quo. Let us look at it. If you pre-approved on it, everything looks good. And then we can take the next steps from there, and we'll tell you what to do. Uh, don't take out a new loan. And don't transfer balances from one account to the other account. Now, of course you could do that. But the problem is is that when you see large deposits, and let's say you're moving savings over to checking, which is understandable, then we have to see where the money's coming from, from the savings account going into there. You know, if you have the money in there already, keep everything status quo. And don't take cash and plop it into your checking account. If we can't source and season it, that's a problem, um, because then we can't use it. So we have to source and season. Big thing after the mortgage collapse was where's the money coming from? Uh, where is this coming from? Where's that coming from? And that's that's the most annoying thing out there. I get it, but it is what it is. So we're just telling you what not to do. If it does come up, then we just have the paper trail. Just dig in more and get it done. All right. You got any questions on that stuff? I can add a lot more to this list as I'm going through it here. I'm thinking about it, but uh, and I probably will do that. So if you got any questions, just comment down below. Shoot me a private message. Or text me at 423-262-9229. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.